how are we going to get arty with this tool? Usually we're using pencils and paper and charcoal and we're still going to do that. We're just going to look at this tool and we're going to end up tracing it. And one of the things I noticed is just like having this interesting time with the tool, like holding it in your hand. And I love looking at the shadow of this tool as I turn it around slowly and it's there's so many lights coming towards here that you get a lot of different shadows and so forth. So I like to notice these kind of things even when I'm holding a weighty 12 inch Crescent USA wrench. <laughs> Now how, we just traced the whole thing and I figured you knew what I was doing as you were watching that. And I traced it with a pretty dark pencil, a 4B woodless. There's no wood in this pencil, it's just all graphite. All pencil lead as we would call it from the old days. Gosh, I just kind of like that period. But what I've noticed is if we get stuff really close to what we're drawing, and then especially if we have a tracing of it, if we've already traced around it, then I can see that this was the opening of this hole, and it might actually have been a little bit bigger than this. So I'm seeing that as I look down here, one of the reasons this looks bigger is because as I look down here, let you look down here. As you look down into it, it's almost like there's concentric circles, and I don't mean in a spiral, but they land down here. When you're doing your tracing, you might you might actually push your pencil underneath this a little bit more if you want to get that hole bigger. But we're having fun with this. We're just going to check it out, and I'm going to just kind of tease in a bigger hole. Now, I just happened to have just <laughs> finished doing a video that had caps, and so if you've got concentric caps that might be the right size, here this one might work. It might be just right. I've got so many of them. I think that one, that last one was maybe too big, but this one, if I, if I throw my pencil out around it, will still give me a nice circle and I don't have to play around with it. Now it may not center it the way I want to, but I kind of like it because if you looked at this like from here, like that, then you'd see a lot of this side and you wouldn't see as much of that side. So none of this has to be perfect. None of it has to be perfect or right. And sometimes we, you know, understand that it can't be, all right? So we don't even worry about that, all right? And so we're gonna come out with this wider one and then maybe even go a little bit wider using the smaller one as a guide. So I'm kind of just playing around here with how I can draw this thing. Now there was something on this paper here that probably having had the wrench on it, it's a little bit wonky there. I love that. I think that looks really good. And then I noticed that this is when you start noticing things. Okay. I noticed that it's really light right here, but as it turns away from the light on the sides of it, it becomes darker. So I'm going to go ahead and darken a little bit around the edge of that so that I end up with a forward, a very um, coming forward right in here. I keep it light and down here I'm going to keep it a little bit darker too. And then that'll leave this light. And I'm doing this all right now without an eraser, but if you had a needed eraser or something like that, you could take your time to come in and correct things. But I want to show you that you can do this without necessarily correcting things and just with playing around with it. And I'm only playing around with the graphic right, graphite right now. So um, I want to leave this outer part a little bit darker and then I want to leave this a little bit lighter and I can smear in here if I want to, and I always want to, because smearing's really fun. And then another thing I want to do right now is come in here and what I call back up this 
edge, um, the very bottom of this hole where I traced it, there's this line. Okay, so there's this line. And I don't want it to look like a line. I want it to feel like it's an edge, not, not a line there. And so I come in and just very carefully match the same tonal value, the same gray as the line is with what I'm putting around it. So now it actually kind of feels like it's going down. And so that's where just playing around here and having some fun with what all you're doing is um, instructive. It's going to teach you how to do a lot of different things. Here I'm playing around with where the heck I'm going to start this box. This is sort of like a box that starts right here. And I could just make little marks right here, but I'm going to try to keep my marks off of the outside of it just because I don't want to have to erase that. So right around there, doesn't matter where, just right around there is where this, and keep it right here so we can see it, we can touch it. So right around there, I don't really want to switch to my left hand here, but I want to be able to have you see this. This is it's going to be silver right here. It's going to be light. I might have left more space between here and here, but I didn't. So again, what is it? It's all okay. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to bring this in around here like that. And you see how I'm kind of using the side of this big bulby, not too sharp pencil so that I can, I'm not really making a line this time. I made a line when I went and erased, or I mean, traced around here, but now I don't need to make lines that are so heavy because all I want to do is leave this light top of the, of the wrench light, and then I want to bring in, just like I did back here, uh, I just back, like back right here, I want to pull this edge in a little bit because I want to make that way the metal rolls there. So this is going to come in like this and it seems to me that it goes down. It's kind of curvy on the edges around here as it as it comes around and curvy a little bit. It's a rounded corner here and watch saying stuff like that. You know as soon as you say something like rounded corner you're less looking at this and more taking something right out of your mind. Um, but I want you just to be able to look at this and see that it's coming in here and then it comes down into a flat place. Now, I have a preference, personally, for not writing on drawings. You know, in other words, it's 12 inch Crescent USA. I would write that last and I'd wait till I've really seen how this really is if I were gonna write that. And you know, maybe it's, I'm pulling this up now. Um, because I've already turned the corner here. Um, maybe it's because I'm a little bit lazy, but a lot of times I hear it's just we're kind of looking across at it and from here we're looking straight down at it. Um, but a lot of times it'll kind of steal the show in my opinion, but that's just my opinion. Okay, that's not your opinion. That's my opinion. So all the way down here, now it's going to narrow here and also almost have no... Um, turn here on the neck down here. So I, you always want to kind of, uh, with something like this, the way we're doing this, you want to get ahead of what you're doing and make your plan for when what happens when you get down here. So in other words, I could be, and I was about to, I could be happily going along the edge here. I'll get back there and show you how wide I was making it there, but I'm making it thin up here. So that's going to tell me that if I'm going to work this edge to curl down, that I want to maybe have it be bigger back here because I'm trying to make this white right in here be the shiny part that's right here of where the metal faces up to the light. In this case, there's overhead lighting. And again, I want to, this is a really important concept uh, which is just that you can go ahead and match the tonal value here to what you had outlined, um, traced around. Now, if this line had been any darker than this, like if I had pressed harder when I was outlining, 
then I would erase it. I call it erasing it back. I would use the kneaded eraser, the big fluffy piece of gray blob eraser because it's nicer to the paper and so forth. But the main thing you want to do if you do another one of these, and always think when you're watching this, like, I'll do one and then I'll try another one. Because every time you repeat it, every time you repeat it, you get better. The drawing may not get better. I'm not guaranteeing that every time you do a drawing, a drawing gets better. But what I will say is every time you do a drawing, you get better. Because whatever happened in it, whether it ended up being this successful thing or not, see I'm making this a little darker where this edge turns and then making it lighter as it comes down into there. And then again, like these little corners seem to be a little bit a little bit square. See how I'm pulling this out and almost making like a little squarey, squarey corner here? Okay. Just bringing this in, hopefully not bringing it in too far, but I'm just kind of trying to make that a little square. I don't want to do too much more. I might get more there than I really need to. Again, when you put things in your mind that say, oh, that's a little square corner, you know, you'd be surprised how hard you could hit that. You know, you just find your hand drawing what your mind says. And you don't want your hand drawing what your mind says. You want your hand drawing what your eye sees and what you've assessed. But, alas, I'm making a video and you're talking to yourself while you're drawing. So we're both talking and when we talk, we speak in words looking at. So I'm taking my time here, although guess what? Full disclosure, I'm doing this as fast as I can. <laughs> but we're not speeding it up. We're not going to speed this up. We're not going to go so fast that you think you must draw fast all the time or it's not drawing. So there we go. And um, this has a lot of different tonal values in it. This is where you could co keep coming on top of this and doing different layers of different tones in different parts of this to make it look good. I'm going to eventually, I had no idea I'd kind of get into this detail of it, but this guy, meaning this wrench, really lends itself to, um, you know, it lends itself to examination. You know, it's a pretty fun thing. And whenever you trace something, again, whenever you trace it, it's going to um, show you things that are easy to see because they're so close to what you traced. So as this comes along here, now I'm looking at it from this side, and so that would be as if you were looking at it from your side. So I see the side here facing me while you're seeing the side here facing you. So I'm drawing it based on what I see, not what you see. And I see this stuff over here where this screw thing comes through there. Now I don't know about drawing all that. I know that I could experiment with it, but I do know about doing this, so I'm going to do what I do know about, and then this coming across here, right like that, sure you can see that and then somehow this angle so you just want to feel the angle and then draw the angle way better to feel the angle and then draw the angle than to now this I'm seeing this side of this so it's as if you were seeing that side over here and then I'm going to come around like this and at least it's getting a lot of features um, it gets a little bit uh, funny, I'm going to kind of weight the, this line as if it's got a shadow underneath it because on this side it does. Um, this is this little screw thing. This is this bigger screw thing. And again, if you said it was if it was round, it wouldn't really look right because it needs to be a little bit oblong because of what's going on here. Hmm. This would be a handy place to have an eraser about now. But just draw lightly, play around with it, know that you're not going to, I mean, you may, you know, if you're still in that space where every time you want something to turn out and, um, and then it doesn't and it freaks you out and then you say, well, I hate this thing, 
then maybe this will be the last time that you draw it, you know. That is how we handle some things in life. Okay, this thing was so wonky. This is the last time I'm ever going to do that thing. But I think this thing's fun, and I'm going to try to do a few things before we cut out of here um, that will show you what I mean by that, that some of this is fun. So I'm trying to just kind of set up these different um, things that are happening in this. Like, I'm again, I'm seeing this side of it, and this is where it gets funny where you traced it, but you're seeing it differently. So I'm glad we're doing this and you're not just reading this someplace that says, hey, you can do this, do that. And you'd be like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's not what I'm seeing. Now here's this thing. It comes across here. It, it dives in here. And see how I trace it with my finger? I actually feel it with my finger and then I take it across. And that's going to help you so much. The more you can do that, the better. Um, now I look across here and see where this came to and it came to about here and of course there's the sighting of where I'm looking at it from and then there's the feel of it in real actual metal reality okay this is a little bit different um, texture I'm going to come up here as this comes up and then I need to find where this is and I think it's right in in this area here so this is going to come up to here and this is where you want to just draw lightly until you figure some of this stuff out and so forth and again the first time you're figuring something like this out it's going to be different <laughs> than later you know this is what we need to tell ourselves and our kids all the time is like this is you know the first time through is not the last time through unless of course you're like no no no, that doesn't work for me. So I'm just kind of making these little turny things here and not worrying about it too much, not getting all bent out about what is happening and what should be happening. And again, this just comes down into here and comes actually into this. It doesn't really swing like that. All of a sudden this is like, whoa, I'm a wrench that's kind of got like flowy lines. It's like, really? Wrenches have flowy lines. It's really not how we think about wrenches. So we're going to have to probably make this all fun and everything with some charcoal in a second. But we want to get this laid out in a way that we have maybe maximum control to start with, and then we can tasty it up. It keeps coming to my mind, so I'm just going to say it. We can kind of tasty it up with, um, with some charcoal. And now people say you can't draw it with charcoal over uh, graphite, but my students have proved that wrong a long time ago. Okay, here's another place that has something that, let's see, this, again, touch it, feel it, and then you know, okay, you get to lock that off. That goes like that, and this is a different surface right in here. I guess I could make this surface, it's almost got lines in it, lines in the surface, but I don't think that's working that well. I'm going to do it and then smear it so it's not as big of a deal. And I think I'm going to do that and smear this too, even though I'm not going in that liney direction now. Anytime you get something you don't quite like, then go in and kind of fill it in so it doesn't have a texture that you don't like anymore. It has a texture that you at least can live with. Okay, that's what I'm doing. So smear, smear, smear. Hold that out. This would be a good place for the kneaded eraser to come in. This is not going to be as light as that is. And this is going to be different texture than the other, but not as light. This itself is looking up at the light, kind of light. So maybe we will leave this kind of stuff light. This is, gets dark in here. And next time around, this would be my big thing, is maybe even start with this so I can push out from there. Okay. All right, so there is sort of kind of the wrench. Uh, of course, it fits my bill. It fits what I like because I like things to be a little bit awkward. But if you don't like things to be, I'm coming in with the charcoal now, so get ready, get ready. It's happening. Um, if you don't like things to be um, wonky, awkward, 
uh, where you're using the materials to describe, but also the materials as themselves to do awesome things with, then uh, this is a great way for you to learn how to draw, um, but you may want to uh, do other things, uh, other, other things like we've done some leaves, and they're way more forgiving in terms of what they actually are. Um, okay, so I don't want to obscure what we've done here. I like it. Are you liking it more? It's getting some fun, expressive lines. First we tried to get really accurate lines, and now we're getting expressive lines because that's what the fine charcoal does. It's this fine charcoal and it's just little sticks of charcoal. So I've got all that and then lately I'm just having so much fun bringing in, see I don't even have to get any of this right now just because now it's the feel of it. It's more how it feels. It's wrenchy enough. You're like, well, what'd you think of that? Well, it was wrenchy enough, okay? Maybe I will write 12 inch just because I should go the distance, right? 12. Now you have to make sure you write it like you see it. So I'll put this over here so you can see it too. And then the big C. And then an R. And then an E. And then a C. And then an E. And then an N. And then a T. And then a trademark. And then a U. Oops, just a U, Margaret. U, period. S, period. A, period. I've never done this before. I think it's the first time I've ever written on anything, ever. Now, it shows itself too much, so I'm going to blend it just like that and let it sink back into the whole of the rest of it. The whole of the rest of it. Let's see if we can do something with our brushes and maybe a little bit of gray and this is going to be a chromatic gray. I'm taking blue and going back into something that had orange and blue in it already and then I want to see over here like how how much that is and it would be fun to bring other colors into it but first let me just see what happens with this. It also might be fun to make Break anything that you didn't get made before. This is a time where you can try to give it a look like something that you uh, like. Maybe it looks more like it when you come in with the watercolor. And again, it's your drawing, so you don't have to come in with watercolor. One thing I like sometimes is what I've got right here and then working it on, I had it a little bit more blue there, I don't know if it's going to show with that, but sometimes when it dries, when you've added just a little bit more of something, you're going to get a little bit more color when it dries, depending on how it flows. So if you liked it in graphite, you keep it in graphite. If you want to come in with colored pencil, after your graphite, you can do that. I'm going to come in with a little bit of colored pencil here. Whoa, it's looking kind of wrenchy to me. Yeah, kind of wrenchy. So if you want a little more precision, I've got like a black colored pencil, and I could come in here with this. I could come in here, especially once it's dry, and play around with making things yet again another layer of juiciness once the watercolor dries but because you might be gone by then I'm just doing a little bit of it now but isn't that fun I'm much much happier with that surface I wasn't that happy when I tried to do these lines across here now I may be running into water but I may not and so always know that you can work with your different mediums and you will make it juicy you know it will become juicy especially if you let each medium do what it wants to do and then it tells you it talks to you and in this case the wrench talks to you the wrench talks and then um, the mediums talk you listen by looking 
and watching. Going by field, going by field. Going by field, by field.